Hello, welcome to the scenic splendours of North Wales and the third series of Paddles Up, the ultimate test of a canoeist's skill and courage, and some might even say his sanity. We've brought together 22 competitors, 15 men and 7 women, who are prepared to risk their life and limb for just a few moments of televised glory. They've been divided into three groups for the first round, and it's the winners and the runners-up who will go through to the final, along with the fastest loser. Well, our resident canoeing expert is John Gosling, and he's waiting for us down by those white waters. Now, there were literally hundreds of canoeists who would like to have taken part. We've had to choose 22. How, how deep is the strength of depth of those 22? Fairly deep. We've got two out of the current three world champions, three former world champions, two European champions, six, seven national champions, and all of them in their own right deserve to be here. So, fairly strong. It sounds it indeed. Well, now let's meet the eight canoeists that we're going to see tonight in the first heat of Paddles Up. And the first competitor will be 25-year-old Peter Bell from Milton Keynes, who's Britain's number two paddler in the C1s. That's where they kneel and use a single paddle, and watch him switch that paddle from left hand to right hand. 23-year-old Fritz Sins from Holland is currently the best kayak canoeist in that country who competed well in the recent World Championships. Melvin Jones from Birmingham, who's 21, broke his neck in a car crash in 1983 and missed almost a whole year, but he's making good progress now. Martin Hedges from Windsor won Britain's first ever individual medal in the C1s in the recent World Championships. That was bronze. The eldest competitor in the competition, a former world kayak champion, Norbert Sattler from Austria, who's a good athlete, a prodigious eater, and a Billy Dainty lookalike. And the new world champion in C1s, David Hearn from Washington in the USA, three times previously the runner-up, but this year the winner. 21-year-old Russ Smith from Middlesbrough in Teesside, a fast paddler who occasionally hits a few penalties. 26-year-old Peter Mickler of West Germany was favourite for the World Kayak Championship when that competition was held in his country this year, but he had to settle for second place and silver medal behind Britain's Richard Fox. And this is the very visual and dramatic start to Paddles Up 1985. A sliding launch for Peter Bell and a quarter mile of this river to negotiate with 17 obstacles that have to be manoeuvred. He's gone through the first and now has to paddle a figure of eight around those two poles, which very conveniently are hanging right above a stopper wave. That's right, yeah. The stopper wave, which is the wave that turns back on itself, Tony, and he's broken out to the left now, cut across, and he's coming off the eddy, which is the slack water, and into the stopper. As far as we can see, no penalty so far for Peter Bell. If he misses an obstacle or touches a pole, we add five seconds onto his time at the end, but he's going quite well at the moment. He's working very hard here. This is a difficult stretch of the course because the water's flowing very quickly and he's going through this chicane st stagger and uh, moving his boat from side to side, forward or backwards, it doesn't matter how he does it. Now, he's a C1, uh, as we told you earlier. He's actually kneeling in that canoe and he's using one paddle and it's going to be interesting in this competition to see whether the C1s or the K1s, which are the more traditional kayaks, come out best. I know the canoeists themselves are, are very aware of the competition. That's right, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of competition between the C1s and the kayaks. And here he is at the pirouette gate where he turns it round and tries to hit that ball. And for a C1 to miss it, that's a bad move by Peter. And he's off there and got a 10-second penalty. Well, he had to have two goes. It's written into the rules. You've got to try twice, and he did, but he wasn't successful. Now under the, the limbo gates, he's touched that one, so that's a penalty. Safely through the next one. Now he's got to turn himself around completely and go backwards through the next two gates. Looks as though he's got through that all right, but he's in trouble here. Yeah, he switched his paddles there from side to side as he went through the second reverse, switches again there. Pete's renowned for this switch, and he's going to come up now, do another figure of eight through this slightly bigger stopper switches again there so he can get a better line out and picks up a penalty there. I think he's got 30 penalties now, Tony. Well, now he's into some slightly calmer water. Uh, little eddy section. He's got two shooting galleries to negotiate. He seemed to catch both of them, although they came back down. I don't think there's a penalty there. He's got another one, and then he goes into the final obstacle. That's a novel way of doing it, which is another fast bit of water where he's got to go through almost a chicane. There are two poles hanging right above some very fast water. Yeah, that's right, and he's going down now past the green pole, spins the boat and tries to get it the right line for the stopper there that he's got to ride along. He's having a bit of trouble there. He's got to get right across the river here to come round this near side of the red pole, and he's not managed it. He's missed it, but he can go back and have another go. He's paddling up the slack water. 
and really working hard, trying to get round that pole, and he does it at the second attempt. But look at the time, 2 minutes 34.8 seconds, plus his penalties will give him a finishing time of 2 minutes 59.8. The first of the kayak competitors is Fritz Sins uh, from Holland. And it will be interesting, John, to see how he manages on this course after that fairly bad run by Peter Bell. Yeah, he should move down the course a lot faster, actually, with the double-bladed paddles there, the kayak man, sitting in his boat. Low break out there, though, on that red pole, but hits it as he goes across, so he's already picked up a five-second penalty on the first obstacle. Does the figure of eight, though, moves nicely into the stopper and a wave down the course. This water, this river flowing at about 20 miles an hour, with some 250 million gallons of water being released from the reservoir quarter of a mile upstream to create these wild white water conditions and it really is bitterly cold in that water yeah it certainly is and he's got this five second penalty at the moment he's having to work hard cutting from side to side and if you notice the poles are in the slack of water so he's having to paddle across the stoppers and the waves to work and work and work down this top half of the course going well here down the tong now to the pirouette he's got to get the bow of the canoe out of the water and touch the ball he's had one go the rules say he's got to have two really going to have to pull with the stomach muscles to get that bow out yeah he, he's sort of really trying hard now and he if he'd have tried on his first one and just held the back of the boat down a few seconds longer he'd have got the ball and i think he was so surprised the front came up so quick and that's why he missed it but he's given that up now through the two limbo gates which aren't too difficult now we they're quite high really because they've got a very difficult maneuver now where they turn the boat backwards and have to go down picked up another five second penalty there so that's 20 in all through the two reverse gates and spins the boat now to go through that stopper and you heard him hit the bottom there stopper wave there as he comes up cuts across turning nicely but clips the green pole again he's picking up quite a few penalties here Tony indeed 30 penalties in all and although he completed the course in 2 minutes 18 seconds his total time of 2 minutes 48 was only briefly good enough to hold the lead and another kayak competitor 21 year old Melvin Jones from Birmingham the man who had that terrible car crash a couple of years ago, but he's certainly making good progress now and is one of Britain's exciting young talents. Yeah, Melvin had a very good World Championships and uh, he's had a very good season. He was first to be selected for the Worlds this year. Fox was pre-selected, so Melvin won the first event and he's, he's fairly confident. I was talking to him before the event and he's doing quite well and he hasn't missed anything at the moment and I know he's going to work very hard down this next stretch. These kayak competitors with their legs extended into the front of the canoe have got three points of purchase to really bring the upper muscles, the upper part of the body into play. And that's the important point. If they, their feet slip inside, they lose a bit of purchase and a bit of a footing, then all the strength goes. That's right, yeah, they've got three points. The footrest, the thighs and the backside on the seat. And Melvin's turning the boat using his legs a lot of the time. And he's done quite well now. He's down there and he's going towards his pirouette gate. And, uh, He's fairly confident he's going to get it in one, he told me, and he hasn't. Completely the wrong approach there, he's stopped too soon, and uh, he's got it though, and he's the first competitor so far to do it, and kept the bow of the boat down, and he's off down now to the limbo boat. In fact, the bow of the boat, and the back of the boat went down so far, he was almost completely submerged, and it's a, a very cold experience when you get into the water here. Yeah, I think Melvin's clear at the moment, and he's just turning onto the reverse gates and picks up a penalty, the death wish there from Goslin spun now and down towards he's got his five second penalty broke out very nicely there and pulls off hard across this stopper has to be careful not to hit the green pole which he's done so he's got 10 seconds now as he moves down to the shooting gallery shouldn't have any trouble down the shooting gallery slack water two obstacles double obstacles to hit and then we'll want to finish well through this little rapid at the end got to go around the far side of the green pole remember come across the stopper wave and round this side of the red yeah he's eased up a bit above the green pole they, they seem to be going a bit slower than we thought they would at this point he's almost over backwards and he's going to have to work hard now but he's sitting in the stopper and if he goes over backwards that's okay but he's had to pull out into the slack water took it too easy at the top there tony and ended up going over backwards big big mistake for melvin but makes it round the red pole of the second attempt and finishes in 2 minutes 18.5 seconds and only 10 seconds of penalty points for a finish of 2 minutes 28.5 and a clear leader.
kayaks have taken the honors so far but now we should see what the c1s are really capable of this is martin hedges from windsor oh he's turned over yeah, oh he's lost it there, completely rolled there before he needed to and uh, martin made a real mistake there and he's having some real trouble he's attempted the obstacle but he's going to have to work very hard to get upstream and this is where the c1s can really come over on the kayaks look at him he claw his way up the back because he's only got to hold that single paddle but he's not going to prove that he can beat them i don't think one moment of disaster then that shows just how strong the flow of this river is. Martin Hedges gets through the first obstacle all right, but watch the bow of the boat. It catches the wall just as he goes through. The flow of the river gets hold of the canoe and he's lost completely. The strength of the water turning the C1 upside down. Martin's quickly back upright, but he's lost in the maelstrom and any chance of winning had gone. His finishing time was 3 minutes 4.8 seconds with 15 seconds of penalties, 3 minutes 19.8. He's out of the competition. 31 years of age, Norbert Sattler of Austria, the former world kayak champion. Norbert's probably a walking legend in canoeing, as Richard Fox is. He, he represented his nation at the Olympics at uh, Augsburg in 1972 and was back there this year at the World Championships where he came 10th. And it's a real pleasure to have Norbert over in Britain for this event because he really is so well known throughout the world. Very clean so far and uh, yet another occasion here, John, when the kayaks look to be doing better on this water than the sea ones. <laughs> that's, that's right, yes. The, uh, the C1s were really here to take them apart and uh, at the moment they're not doing too well. Norbert seems to be handling the top half of this course very well. He's kept going forward all the time and he's now gone through that last pole and down to the pirouette gate here. See if he can get it first time. Lost it there. He, he just didn't keep the back of the boat down long enough there, Tony. And uh, he's going around for the second attempt and missed it again. Now will he attempt it a third time or move on down to the limbo? Well, Norbert Sattler was hypnotised by the pirouette and he paid dear because his finishing time, plus penalties, was 3 minutes, 8.3 seconds. Well, now, what can this man do? The current World C1 champion, David Hearn, from Washington, D.C., will have seen the disaster that befell Martin Hedges and will be, believe me, full of determination, both for himself and for the C1 canoeists, determined to show that they can, in fact, get down this course in a time quick enough to challenge the competition. But he's picked up five seconds penalties already. Yeah, David Ayer coming down was determined to get the course clear, he was telling me, because at the World Championships he didn't touch a pole at all in any of his runs, and uh, he started off by hitting one. I think he's trying very hard indeed to keep the C1 face going, with Martin blowing out and Pete Bell not doing too good in this heat. David's really trying hard. Well, David looked as though he'd be the eternal bridesmaid in the World Championship C1s because three times he was the runner-up in 79, 81, 83, but earlier this year managed to win the championship. Now, can he get the ball in the bag on the pirouette? I actually had a bet with the American lads before this series started that they wouldn't hit the pirouette gate, and they guaranteed me they redesigned the boat to hit this pirouette gate. I think I've won myself a beer, Tony. Well, he's had to give up as David Hearn, this 26-year-old American. Been a canoeing competitor for 10 years. Works as a canoe designer. And also has a degree in geology. Comes from a family of canoeists. That's right. Kathy, his sister, was world champion and uh, represented America again this year, but she didn't do so well as uh, David did in his class. But he's come down through that water there now, through the stopper to the second figure of eight on this course across and held the boat down very well there on the green pole. There's been a lot of penalties on that pole, but uh, he's doing quite well now. He's going to have to work very hard down to the shooting gallery area. He's through the first there, just clips them both, but that's okay, and now he needs to move his boat. But as soon as he starts moving it, he's through the second one. See him working there, doing the J-stroke, as they call it, where he pulls the blade back a bit to keep it in a straight line. But working now, this, this ball must be in his mind. He's got to get over to that green pole, turns the boat nicely, steadies it up, and he's doing the same as Norbert did by cutting across the top, down into the stopper, and brilliantly over the finish line. And a brilliant finish there from David Hearn. The finishing time, 2 minutes 18.7, plus 15 seconds of penalties, 2 minutes 33.7, in second place behind Melvin Jones.
from Middlesbrough in Teesside, Russ Smith, age 21, successfully touches the two discs at the start of the course, the shooting gallery, and now the figure of eight. Yeah, Russ, as you said in the uh, intro, has a, a reputation of hitting poles, but I know he's determined not to hit any on this course, and uh, in Augsburg at the Worlds, he didn't hit any on his uh, successful run down, and uh, he's going to be going all out to, to prove that he is the Paddles Up champion for this year. Russ now working hard, getting his boat from side to side down this top section of the course. And the objective is not to turn the boat backwards. Keep it going forwards, keep it flowing all the time. And he's hit the rock there and had some real trouble. Attempted the gate, but that's a 10 second penalty there as he approaches the uh, pirouette gate. And he lost it there. They, they seem to be turning the boat just a little too soon at the pirouette. And he's done two there now and he's further down the course with the limbos to come and he might have hold his boat he looks a bit apprehensive there he could be taking water in which will prove very interesting on the bottom wheel interesting indeed one thing you don't want to do here is sink nicely through the two gates they have to be negotiated backwards another competitor who has a bit of a clatter on the the rocks at the side of this this river have to work hard he's touched that pole that's five seconds and that's about 15 seconds of penalties he's incurred so far and another one well it's mounting up now a total of 40 penalties were accumulated as Smith sacrificed finesse for speed, and his final total was 2 minutes 44.9. And the final competitor in this first heat, Peter Mickler of West Germany, 26-year-old, the silver medalist from the World Championships in the kayaks. A man who reckons he'd be number one if Britain's Richard Fox wasn't around, but of course he's got to settle, settle for second place behind the the great British canoeist. Yeah, Peter there picking up a five second penalty. The paddlers seem to be hitting poles where normally they wouldn't. And I think it's just the, the excitement of the day, being on telly and trying to win. Paddles up is a fun event, but at the end of the day, all these paddlers really try to win this trophy. And the object, of course, is to test the canoeist's maneuverability and their, their strength. Although, of course, one or two of the obstacles that are introduced have a slightly novelty flavor to give the sport some impact to those who don't normally watch canoeing. Peter doing very well though, 50 seconds down to the ball, does the pirouette and completely turned at the wrong time then and he's just sorting himself out to attempt it a second time and gets the boat high enough but just out of the way and he did well to hold it down there, attempted it three, four times and he's moving down now to this limbo section and what is proving to be a very tricky figure of eight. Those World Championships in which Peter Miklo took the silver medal were held in his hometown of Augsburg in West Germany. So he had every opportunity there. Peter there, very tight on that breakout and very tight across. He's, he's, he's got a good time here. He's perhaps missed the pirouette, but he's 134, 136. He's, he's moving very quickly down to the targets. Slowing up a bit, but he'll keep going now very strongly to the finish. Well, just over two minutes is the fastest descent with the scene, although the canoeist incurred a lot of penalties on that run. So if he can get around that sort of time with fewer penalties, he could challenge the lead. Still held by Melvin Jones, two minutes, 28.5. Now he's working across the top of that weir and wants to shoot down this side of the red pole, and he's not managed it, and I think he touched it. And the finishing time, two minutes, six seconds dead, so it was a fast descent, but 35 penalty points for a total of two minutes, 41 seconds. The real surprise after that first run is to see Martin Hedges with the slowest time and already effectively out of the competition. The top three are Peter Mickler of West Germany, who's just about seven seconds behind the man in second place, the current C1 world champion, David Hearn, with the British kayak canoeist Melvin Jones leading by just over five seconds. Well now for the second run in this Paddles Up series we've moved to a new location on the River Truerin here at Valor to a course which is much shorter but which is certain to prove just as difficult and just as testing for the canoeists. As a result there are really only three men in this first heat who've got any chance of qualifying for the final either as the winner or the runner-up or perhaps as the fastest loser. Melvin Jones and David Hearn and the man who was in third place from West Germany, Peter Mickler. 
2 minutes 41 was his time and that's where the clock starts now for this second descent half a mile further upstream negotiating the Grand Prix gates at the top has to get through the middle of them no penalty if he touches them and now past the paddle through the tyre which he does in a very quick time this looks good from Mikla he was just over 12 seconds off the lead on the first run but he might make some of that up going very well indeed now as he approaches the roll gate where he's got it 360 degrees underwater no trouble at all there but he's a bit disorientated there shakes the water from his head and heads over to the slalom section now through gate 25 26 is the forward upstream gate and now powers back into the moving water for 27. if he touches any of these poles it's a five second penalty and he's going really well i don't think he's got any penalties so far but we'll have to wait for the officials to confirm through 28 and down through 29 with that enormous stop wave at the bottom now just to throw the paddle over the finish you know he's not made it that's a 10 second penalty 336 was his time a really fast run for Mikla of West Germany but plus 10 gives him three minutes 46 well Mikla's descent of 55 seconds on this second run has really thrown down the gauntlet for people like David Hearn who was in second place with two minutes 33.7 after the first descent he knows he's got to get down here virtually clean, John. Yeah, and this, it should save time here, really, but Peter did this section so quickly that Davey's really got to work. He should be fast into the roll gate, up quite quickly, because C1's are renowned for speed rolling. But uh, he might lose it down on this slalom section. Through that very clean, now across to the other side of the river for the slalom gate, safely through gate 25. He'll have to come back across the current, upstream through 26 back again for gates 27 28 and 29 and the time's really going to be crucial remember Nicholas stopped the clock at 336 plus 10 penalties and Hearn had a seven and a half second advantage on him after the first run he won't want to see that evaporate 330 he's quicker so that should be good enough for David Hearn the world C1 champion to put him through to the panels up final well, Hearn's descent was marginally slower than that of Mikla, but he didn't pick up any penalties, and this man, Melvin Jones of Great Britain, certainly won't want to pick up too many penalties either. He was the leader after the first round, with 2 minutes 28.5 from the first run. He wouldn't have any trouble here, John, at the start of the course, but you want to get the paddle cleanly through the tyre. That's right, yeah, this is the crucial part, and Melvin must have been thinking about this at the start. He will have heard what's happened, and he's taken a long, long time there. That could have cost him a place through to the final he's getting going again now down towards this roll gate and Melvin's forte will be on the slalom gates well he had an advantage of just over 12 seconds after the first run on the third place man Nicola so he's got that 12 seconds to play with and he won't want to pick up any penalties shakes his head to clear the numbing cold from that immersion in this icy cold water safely through the first of the two slalom gates three more now 27 28 and 29 into the dark shadows under the Iron Bridge. Well, he's got to get down there now, inside 3 minutes 46. Crashes through the final Grand Prix gate. Oh, and he just does it, 3 minutes 40.4, which will put him in second place, provided he's not incurred any penalties five so it's 345.4 he's into the final by virtue of six tenths of a second so it's jones the british canoeist and hearn the american world champion who've qualified for the finals of paddles up and mickler the west german will have to wait and see if his time is good enough for him to qualify as the runner-up lots of thrills lots of spills and lots of excitement in this first heat of paddles up we hope you've enjoyed it and make a note to join us again on BBC One tomorrow at the same time. Bye-bye. Hello, welcome back once again to North Wales and the wild white waters of the River Truerin, which proved such a hazard in the first heat of Paddles Up. And now there are seven more canoeists ready to face the same cold challenge as the first round continues with heat number two. Once again, we've a really impressive lineup of canoeists, national and world champions, ready to make two descents down this beautiful stretch of water. We know from heat one that Melvin Jones of Britain and David Hearn of America are definitely through to the final, and these are the seven canoeists who are now bidding to join them.
And the first competitor will be 19-year-old Richard Lee, who's the local boy from Bala, attracted to kayak canoeing when the World Championships took place here in 1981. And from Italy, 23-year-old Renato De Monti, who's the Italian national champion at C1 and was fourth in the World Championships. Jimmy Jays of Shepparton is already the British men's slalom kayak champion for 1985, with two of the six events still to be raced. He certainly profited from the absence of Richard Fox. When the World Kayak Championships are held in France in 1987, this man is certain to be among the favourites, Manuel Brissot from Grenoble, who's likely to be the French champion this year. New Zealand's best paddler for many years is Donald Johnston, aged 23, their national champion, who's currently climbing in the world rankings. And one of the world's best ever canoeists, three times the world champion in the C1s, 26-year-old John Luckville from America. But he had to settle for runner-up this year behind fellow countryman Hearn. The inimitable and unmistakable Richard Fox from Stone in Staffordshire, three times the world kayak champion, the first man ever to win that title three times, who now says he wants both slalom and wild water titles in 1987. We'll see. And now the first competitor in heat two. This is the local man from Bala, Richard Lee, who's 19. Attracted to canoeing when the World Championships took place here a few years ago. All these marvellous facilities on his doorstep, although, of course, today's course will be completely new to him. And as ever, the watchful eye of our resident expert, John Gosling, looking for penalties and mistakes, and already won, John. That's right, yeah, silly little five there, really, because he was doing the right thing, and he's done another one. It He's just not working quite hard enough at the top of the course, but now I'm sure he'll get into gear, move down and keep working. And he's, he's doing well now, he's, he's keeping the boat flowing, and that's what it's all about. Keep the boat moving all the way down the course. Working hard, looking quite good, wearing his Welsh colours there. He's a member of the Welsh squad, and Richard is uh, really pleased to be in this competition, and uh, I'm sure he, he's looking to qualify. As he, at 19, got the strength to get the bow out high enough to touch the ball on the pirouette. He, uh, he approached it slightly wrong on his first attempt, and he's done the same thing again now, and, and it, it's silly, really, because the, when they looked at the course, the paddlers walked down the course well in advance, and they, they all work out what to do, but in the heat of the moment, coming down, and it's the one thing that psychologically gets to them is this ball, this pirouette gate, but now moving down through the limbos and to the two reverse gates before this what is proving to be a very tricky figure of eight. 17 obstacles to be manoeuvred on this quarter mile long course. It's around the first part of the figure of eight. He stuck around the far side of the green pole, which he does. And this, if you remember in the first heat, is the it's the slog end of the course. They're having to work quite hard coming down here. And Richard seems to be putting a lot of effort in, and he knows he can make time up. They've seen what the uh, competitors in Heat 1 did on this, and they know that anything around 2 minutes, 2.20, can win the, win the Heat. Easily through the first part. Now he's got to paddle across the top, and he's not made it. Oh, and he's turned over in the stopper wave. We want to see that come back up again pretty quickly, please. I think a little bit of difficulty. And we might need some help. Yeah, I think he lost his paddles there and ended up having to swim, and uh, that's him out of the competition. Back at the top, Renato De Monti of Italy begins his descent as news comes from 200 yards downstream that Richard Lee has been fished wet and cold from the water and disqualified from the competition. Renata there came down and uh, I think he was a bit hesitant having seen the first heats and uh, yesterday where Hedges went over he actually missed the first two obstacles he missed the targets and uh, did the next maneuver very nicely indeed and he's moving down now through this fast flowing water trying to keep his boat moving as I've said before they've got to keep the boat moving here because this is where they can make up the time Italy's national champion in the C1, finished fourth in the World Championships, just outside the medals, which was Italy's best result in that competition. Now, down the tongue of 
fast water to the pirouette and it, it has been done in the competition but not often yeah they, the c1 should have no trouble at all here really and it, it just didn't seem to try that hard but in the first heats it was successfully done and that's what proved the uh, the winning point of it and oh and he just missed by inches there must be feeling a bit depressed but he's thought enough time's wasted get on down that course and De Monte went on to complete the course in 2 minutes 30.7 seconds plus 30 penalties so his total 3 minutes 0.7 of a second now another of the kayak canoeists Jimmy Jays Shepperton in Middlesex and he seemed to miss one of those no he got both of them he just came down so quickly Jimmy's really out to uh, win this event he was telling me earlier he's written off three boats this week practicing and training for the paddles up oh he's just folded his boat in half he's folded the front of his boat there went completely in half it's sprung back because they make them out of the Kevlar material which springs back and Jimmy's coming down and you'll see again in a minute the front of his boat is bent he, he, this event has cost him so much money these boats are about 300 pound each Tony and this will be the fourth in a week and uh, he's not going to be very pleased with his manufacturer either I wouldn't think but another illustration there John of the, the, the force and the volume of this water let's see that again where Jimmy comes up to the fast flowing water the front of the boat hits the riverbed there and the force of the stop away turns and breaks the boat right by his feet you can see they're bent completely in half and the boat being made of Kevlar enables it to spring back into position as he comes back up and the boat leaves the water but at the bottom of the course there's the extent of the damage to the bottom of the boat virtually disintegrating by the time it got to the bottom his finishing time 2 minutes 28.8 and 35 seconds of penalties so he's well down well, we've had boats disintegrating, others turning over. I wonder what's in the mind of Manuel Brousseau of Grenoble, the top French canoeist, as he starts his quarter-mile descent of the River Tuerin. The next World Championships in 87 will be held in France, and this man is considered by many to be one of the likely contenders for medals when that takes place. Yeah, the French are really pleased to be over at this event, and... Uh and while he's looking fairly good at the moment with the way that this second heat's going he's, uh, he's got to be feeling confident if the news has come back up the course of what's been happening and uh, he's going to uh, feel very confident and you can see he's taking it fairly steady trying to ke keep it as clean as possible because I think a clean run is definitely going to get these paddlers qualified through to the final Here he is at the pirouette, and he just put the boat front of the boat down just two seconds too soon there, Tony, and, and they really do seem to be psychologically out of this pirouette gate. We know it's feasible, we know it's possible, we've seen it done, but uh, no one seems to be uh, succeeding. So he's incurred a penalty there, he's given up on the pirouette, safely th through the limbos. It's a good clean run, this, by Brissot. Now he's got another figure of eight through the middle of the two poles, back up the slack water on the side, alongside the bank, around the far side of the red pole, back across the stoppers, and round the green, and he's clean again. Yeah, if he works hard now down this shooting gallery, hits the uh, obstacles that he needs to hit, but keeps working hard, keeps the boat moving, he's uh, in with a very, very good chance. I think he's got the uh, the 10 on the pirouette gate, and apart from that, I haven't seen him uh, make any mistakes, but uh, it's all down on his last fall. This seems to be the uh, the dreaded area at the moment, Tony. It's not going to be the fastest descent. That was two minutes and four seconds that we saw in the first heat, but the canoeist then, Jones, had a lot of penalties, and safely through the finish, two minutes, 10.7, plus 15 seconds of penalties, so a total two minutes, 25.7, puts him in the lead, and that's the best time we've seen in Paddles Up so far. All the way from New Zealand, Donald Johnston, who is 23, the national kayak champion of that country, and their best paddler for many years. Finished 15th in the World Championship. Safely through the first part of the figure of eight. And that enormous stopper wave is about two foot high. 
Yeah, it, it's quite large. It's a lot larger than it looks on the screen when you're sitting in the water. And Donald going down here clear at the moment. And uh, again, he looks to be going for a clean run. They're, they're really sussing it out now and realising that if they can keep this course clean, they're going to qualify. And to qualify puts them into the final and gives them the chance of winning the trophy. Having to fight hard to get into the flow. He's all right here. Now, not many have touched the ball. This is his second go. No, he'll be well advised to give up and paddle on. Yeah, they, they do not like to be... Uh beaten by the course and uh, he picks up the 10 seconds there as he goes down to the limbo and as long as he can put that out of his mind now and, and keep working hard he's still in with a chance they um, they but they don't like to be beaten by the water by the obstacles nicely through that stopper there turned the boat very nicely and comes down to this figure of eight gate holds the boat tight there and moves on upstream Apparently Tony, he's also got a 10 there on uh, gate 12, so he's got 20 seconds of penalties, and uh, where I said a nice move, he was actually turning a bit too soon, because he, had, he was supposed to go through the gate backwards, and he went through it angled forward downstream. But uh, he's, he's moving the boat and keeping it going, and uh, even with that sort of penalty, he stands a chance of qualifying. So 20 seconds at least to add to that time. He's got to get across here, oh, and hits the last obstacle, so that's another five. It's 25 seconds of penalty points to add to that, two minutes, 18.1. The total time, two minutes, 43.1 seconds. One of the world's great canoeists, John Lugbill, the American from Washington, three times the world's C1 champion, silver medalist this year, tremendous canoeing pedigree. And this will be an interesting time to see. All the other canoeists will watch with interest to see what Lugbill can do. John is definitely all set to qualify for the final. We were talking yesterday evening and he said there is no way he's going to get penalties. There's no way he's going to miss the, revert, the pirouette gate. There's no way he isn't going to qualify for this final. And it's going to be really interesting. John is trying very hard. He's, he's a walking animal, we call him. He's, he's so aggressive on the water. He's so powerful. He's probably the best white water paddler in the world if you're taking competition and uh, here he comes down to this pirouette gate and it's a real real test well his time is already very fast oh and he was so close but i think he was just an inch below it oh and he's turned over oh well gritty american determination he's having his third go at it he's had a ducking and he's not going to give up well if, if John and I had a bet last night, and I've just won another pint of bitter here, and I'm doing quite well. He's, he's blowing his chances stupidly, but he won't be beaten by this pirouette case. He, he really was determined to get it. Well, that's cost him 30 seconds, because he was there for about 20 seconds longer than he needed to be. He's incurred 10 seconds of penalties. And those private... Bets. Well, he didn't seem to go through that backwards. Does that count as backwards? Well, I'm, I think he's very suspect there, and I'm sure he's got another 10 seconds, yeah. And John's throwing it away as he comes down this course here. He's going to be so disappointed at the finish. He was so confident. Well, we've seen a 225.7 and a 243.1 in this second heat. And I don't think he's going to beat those times. John Lugbill and with Richard Fox of Britain still to go after him it's very unlikely that he'll reach the final that's right but I mean there is always this outside chance of the fastest person etc and uh, John's moving down nicely now with just the, the 20 seconds penalties through the first part now he's got to get round this side of the red pole and he's not achieved it so he's going to have to paddle back up. He'll have to go across the river to the slack water and then cut across the stopper wave. And the time's ticking away all the time. And there's at least 20 seconds to add to that. He's rounded at the second attempt. It looks clean. So it's 240.5 plus 20 is 3 minutes, 0.5 of a second. And that might not be good enough. 
and every canoeist along the river will be watching with interest to see the three times world kayak champion Richard Fox from Stone in Staffordshire and let's see what sort of time he can turn in Richard there breaking out low he'll be going steady I think for a run on this first half of the course had a knows this water like the back of his hand he trained here for the Worlds in 81 when he won his first gold medal and uh, I think he'll be going nicely but at this stage seems to be showing the others how it should be done because he's gone through the first few obstacles quicker than anybody else of course had a hand in deciding where a few of these obstacles were placed and that might well have given him a slight advantage always consulted when these courses are laid out Richard Fox because he's known for his expertise and his his wisdom at setting the gates yeah the one thing we haven't mentioned in the series so far is that none of the paddlers have been allowed to practice or train on this course they've been on the water and he's approaching the pirouette gate with 50 seconds and it's the one gate he doesn't like I mean Richard will admit he does not like this pirouette gate you can see in his eyes but he doesn't want to get a penalty and uh, he's attempted it twice and he'll have it worked out in his mind his little clock and he's very upset there as he moves down but he'll keep concentrating and keep working well he had three goes but in very quick succession so he's not wasted too much time and those whoops that you can hear when he touched that uh, but I think he touched both of the limbo gates there so those will certainly be penalties and the whoops that you can hear are not Red Indians down the bank it's just the other canoeists who are, <laughs> are watching with interest that's right yeah the uh, they run down and chant him down and, and they'll call him down and they'll have advisors there shouting out splits for him to tell him where they are it's 15 seconds of penalties so far he hit the one limbo gate and he's missed the pirouette and you can see he's steady enough he, he's, he's got a clock in his head that's telling him what time he needs to do and where he needs to be he won't be very happy I think he dis demolished that almost but uh, approaching the bottom we're now in a, a quite respectable time I think Tony. at least 15 seconds of penalties well, very quickly through the first part and very neatly through the second as well and that's the fastest descent that we've yet seen down this course two minutes 2.4 seconds 15 seconds of penalties two minutes 17.4 seconds the fastest run that we've seen in either heat one or heat two we started with seven and now down to six lee is disqualified and who'd have expected to see the former world champion john lugbill of america back in fourth place after that first run and 43 seconds off the leader who's britain's richard fox fox some eight seconds clear of manuel brissot of france with Donald Johnston of New Zealand third. Some of the canoeists think that that first course was a real tester. Yeah, it turned out to be quite tough, didn't it? Especially uh, since we didn't have any time to practice at all. It was just straight in. But uh, you know, it was, I think it was okay. You were almost on a bound to go down as the last man in heat two and do a fast time, and you did. Were you conscious of the pressure on you and the people watching from the bank to see what the world champion could do? Uh, no, not really. I mean, we didn't have time to think about that because it all happened so quickly. So uh, I just got on and in that situation, I think, where you, you're not quite sure what's coming on the course, you've only just had a, a bit of time to look at it, you, you can only be relaxed about it. If you get too worked up, then things start going wrong. You didn't get the ball on the pirouette? No, no, I, I didn't get it last time I did it as well. I, it's quite difficult, uh, I have to say that. And I think it was only two people got it. I perhaps need a bit more time to practice that. So who qualifies for the final? Is it Fox, Risso, Johnston? The other canoeists have had their run, their chance has already been blown, and now waiting at the start for the second run, Donald Johnston, who was third after the first descent, at the time of 2.43.1. That's where the clock starts for this second run. Three fairly simple Grand Prix gates at the start of the course, and then the paddle...